Okay, uh, for these uh, topics, we're going to look at the proteins, okay, particularly in terms of the monomer of the protein, which is amino acids, and how we are going to form a dipeptide, okay? So first, we need to describe and draw general structure of one amino acid, and we have to know how to form and break the peptide bond. So again, when you form the peptide bonds, we use the condensation process and you want to break a peptide bond, then we are going to use the hydrolysis. So this will be our focus for today. Okay, then the next lessons, we're going to look at this. What is the meaning of the primary structure? Secondary structure, tertiary structure and quaternary structure of proteins. And we're going to uh, describe the interactions that hold the protein molecule in a shape, right? We always say that in RAR, polypeptide fall into a precise three-dimensional shape. So it means that how? So these are the interactions that actually link them or, or interaction that make or maintain the shape of a protein. So again, hydrogen bonding, hydrophobic interactions, ionic bonds, and covalent bonds, including the disulfide bonds. And in terms of protein, we're going to learn, okay, the structure of protein. Generally, we're going to look at this, what we call as the globular protein, as well as, okay, uh, fibrous proteins, okay? So in terms of this, okay, sorry, uh, uh, global protein and fibrous proteins, and we look at how, whether they are soluble or insoluble. We're going to talk about the hemoglobins, as a sample globular protein. And we relate the structure of hemoglobins to the functions, including the importance of the ions, ions in the heme groups. Then we can look at the collagen as a fibrous protein, and we have to relate the structure of collagen molecule and collagen fibers to their functions. Okay. Huh? So for today, we're going to look at the amino acid first. Okay, so amino acids always have this, what we call the central carbon C. Okay, so central carbon C, because we know that each carbon atom can have a maximum of four bonds. So this means that the central carbon C will attach to four groups of a chemical or, of, or functional group. So first, you can see that they attach to the amino groups or in some book, they call it as an amine group. Same meanings, yeah, guys? Amino groups or amine groups. And then you have the carboxylic acid group, hydrogen atom. Be careful, highlights. It's not hydrogens, but hydrogen atom. Okay. And all amino acids will have these three groups. Fix one, huh, guys. All amino acids will have these three groups. So what make this different? Because we have 20 amino acids, right? So what make them different actually is a side change R group that's specific to each amino acid. So we have 20 different side chains. So these 20 different side chains, okay, are going to give us these 20 types of amino acid. Okay. So the simplest amino acid is glycine, where the R group is just an is just a hydrogen atoms. Okay. So how you draw this? A molecule of amino acids, how you draw. So always start draw it with the central carbon C. Okay. So we have central carbon C. So this central carbon C will attach to four groups. Okay. So the first group, always conventionally, we put the NH2 at the left hand side. So NH2. Can you see that? So this group is termed as amine group. Okay, amine group. And then so right hand side, we put them C O O H. So this is carboxylic acid group. Okay, carboxylic acid. Okay, and then you have a hydrogen atom as the third one here.
And what makes them different is their side change R group. So this is a side change R group. Or simply we say that, okay, R group. Are you clear? Okay. Yeah. So the ones with the blue color means that all amino acid will have these three groups. Huh? Okay. As long as it's called amino acids, they have these three groups. So what is called amino acid? Amino, okay, acid. Amino, amine groups, amine groups, and carboxylic groups. So that's why amino acid. Okay. And then hydrogen atom with the R group here. So glycine, so glycine basically they are the simplest amino acids. Why they are simplest amino acids? So when you draw it, you can see that C central carbon with four bonds and then NH2 and then COOH, H. H. So the R group exchange with H. So it means that hydrogen atom is the simplest one. So no one can be more simplest compared to the glycine. So glycine is the uh, smaller, right? it's a smaller and simplest amino acid, okay? And if you look at this R group, we can actually categorize this R group based on this R group properties. So this R group can either be hydrophobic, means that no charge and a lot of hydrocarbon. It can be hydrophilic. So hydrophilic, it can be either charged or polar. So let us look at this. Okay, so amino acid can be grouped based on the property of the R group. So the R group can be either positively or negatively charged R group or polar uncharged hydrophobic. So these two right now, they are hydrophilic. Means that they can interact with water molecules. Again, okay? this R group. And also we do have the hydrophobic R group as well. Now, Look at this uh, table, okay? In fact, you are not required to remember which amino acid they are charged, which amino acid they are not charged, which are one uh, polar or non-polar. No need to remember, but if the question want to ask you, they will show you the diagram, something like this. Are you clear? And you have to decide which one, the type of R group. So how we actually go uh, recognize the structure, uh, okay? Always remember, you look at this, uh, OH, OH, okay? Uh, NH2, NH2, can I see that? NH2, okay? SH also sometimes, and then this OH, OH, right? Can I see that? So we do know that a lot of times when you can see that this OH, oh, sorry, OH, NH, something like this. So this kind of structure, actually, they are polar, okay? So the first one, they are polar hydrophilic R groups, okay? Uh? So uh, you can actually highlight the OH here, okay? SH. SH is not so strong, but OH and NH, yes, okay? Uh? Now, I also want you to be careful about the cysteine, uh, because cysteine got the sulfur. Okay, so it means that for amino acids, we always say that, uh, oh, we don't learn about C, they have the carbons, they have hydrogen atom, they have oxygen atom, they have nitrogen atom, but don't forget some of them, they have the sulfur atom. One is cysteine, another one is methionine, I will show you later, okay? Oh, next. How about this? So you can see that the R group here, they are positively charged. Can you see that? Positively charged positively charged. So only three amino acids belong to this group, lysine, arginine, and histidine. Three of them, they are positively charged R groups. Okay, why? Because of the this. Okay, positive. Can you see that? Positive. Okay. Now next. How about this? Aspartic acid and glutamic acid, you can see that they have COO minus. So it means that they are negatively charged. So we have these two negatively charged R group, okay? And the rest of them, you can see that they are hydrogen atom only. A lot of these hydrocarbons, right? Hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon chain. 
Can you see that? Hydrocarbon change. Now, just, just now I say methionine. Methionine have the sulfur also. Okay, methionine also have sulfur, but they are different eh, compared to the uh, cysteine molecule. And you can see that here also hydrocarbons, aromatic hydrocarbon. So therefore, this group confirmed they are non-polar hydrophobics R group. They have non-polar hydrophobics R groups. Okay. Now, now why we need to know, okay, these R groups? Because when the protein want to fall into a three-dimensional shape, we need something to hold. Okay. So generally, between polar R group with polar R group, okay, polar with polar R groups, they form hydrogen bonds. Okay, positively charged and negatively charged R group, they're going to form ionic bonds okay, to make the uh, to, to, to link, okay, or to make the protein fold. And between hydrophobic and hydrophobic R groups, they're going to form hydrophobic interactions, where we're going to look at those of them uh, next lessons, okay, how this bond actually holds right, uh, polypeptides together, okay, uh, to form a complete protein. So in these diagrams and compared to my diagrams, okay, that I draw, you realize that here, okay, why is not COOH? Why is not NH2? So this is what we call as the formations of the zwittel ions, okay? So let us look at what is mean zwittel ions. Zwittel ions, they are neutral molecule with positive and negative electrical charge at different locations within that particular molecule. And it's formed through a process known as intramolecular acid-based reactions. And amino acid definitely is the best known example of zwittel ions. Okay, so let us look at what is meant by zwittel ion. You can draw it in this uh, uh, activity 3.16. Let us look at what's by zwittel ion. Okay, zwittel ion and the charge ions are they are slightly different. Okay, so what's in zwittel ion? Let us again look at the structure of the amino acid. So central carbon C linked with four groups. So one H, the R groups. Okay, C, O, O H and H2. So in solid form, yes, okay? But if in aqueous form, in aqueous form, then what will happen here is they actually can change into zwittel ions, okay? Because this part will behave like acid, so they donate proton. Okay, this part act as the base. Okay, by accepting proton. So what will happen here is, is the intramolecular. Intramolecular means that within the same molecule, right? Within the same molecule. So what we're going to have here is, these hydrogen ions, okay, will dissociate and then join here. Can I see that? Within the same molecule, you are going to have a negatively charged and positively charged group here. So what we're going to have here, you can see that C, H, R group, C, O, O minus, and here N, H, and H. So we have the proton attached to it, become an H3 positive. So if you look at this now, this structure, these locations, they are positively charged. And these locations, they are negatively charged. So it means that overall molecule, if you look at its overall molecule, they are neutral. Now ignore the effect of the R group. We do know that some R group, they can be positive or negatively charged, but ignore the R group. But if you look at this structure overall, they are neutral. Okay. So when they are, in this case, they are neutral, but at different locations, they have charge. So it means that this kind of molecule is known as zwittel ion. And zwittel ion is very, very important, particularly in, in terms of the blood 
pH or pH regulation or pH homeostasis. Are you clear? Zeta ions are important in pH homeostasis by behaving or by acting as pH buffer. So what is the pH buffer function? pH buffer tends to help to maintain the pH at a narrow range. Now, what does this mean? If you look at the human's blood pH, okay, our human's blood pH is relatively about okay, 7.2 to 7.4. The pH is very, very narrow. Anything lower than 7.2, it will cause a disease called acidosis. You will die because your protein, okay, denature. If anything happens more than 7.4, it becomes alkalosis. Alkalosis basically means that your blood pH is high. And this will cause what? It will cause the, your and our enzymes, our proteins to be denatured again. So we have to maintain at 7.2 to 7.4. So how we maintain? So we need a pH buffer, someone to act as a pH buffer to maintain this pH at a very narrow range. So zeta ions, they are one of the example of this pH buffer. So let us look at how zeta ion act as a pH buffer, yeah? So let me draw out a zeta ion again. So C, R grouped, H, C, O, O minus. And N, H, 3 positive. Try not, it's zeta ion. So when the pH is low, how pH is low? Acidic crop. pH is low, acidic. So acidic is because of the free proton. Concentrations is high. Are you clear? When the free proton concentration is high, therefore it becomes acidic. So what we're going to do here is these extra hydrogen ions can actually interact with O minus. So therefore, when the H plus join with the O minus, we reduce the free protons. So the concentration decreased, therefore pH go back to normal. Are you clear? Yeah. It's totally depend on the free. So once they're joined here, guys, where's my pointer? Okay, so you look at this, when this free, free is the one that causes acidic. When they join back, H plus join to O minus. So when they link together, then we reduce the number of the proton into in our blood. Therefore, we decrease the free protons. Therefore, pH go back to normal. Are you clear? So this at low pH. Okay, you can take a photo if you need. Okay, let me draw another diagram. So when the pH is high, Again, uh, C, H, R, C, O, O minus, N, H, H plus, H. So when say pH is high, pH is high because of the alkalines, right? or base alkali, right? alkalines, or Why alkalines? Because of the increase in the OH minus concentration of free OH. Are you clear? So what will happen here is the free OH, now we see a lot of OI, hydroxyl, eh? hydroxides, not hydroxyl, hydroxides ions. So what will happen here is this part. can detach. Are you clear? So when it detach, okay, it will join with this. Can you see that? To form water molecule. So therefore, when it join, it's going to decrease the free hydrox, okay, hydroxide ions. 
So therefore, we increase, eh, we decrease, eh, when you decrease the free hydroxide ions, so therefore we decrease the pH back to normal. Are you clear? So pH, when pH is high, so it means that we have more OH minus ions. So this OH minus ions will cause the protons to release. Okay, when the proton release and bind to the OH minus, they form water. So therefore, we reduce the free OH minus ions. So therefore, our pH initially high, right? Now decrease back to normal. So this is how the zeta ions can act as the buffer. Okay, to make sure that our blood pH can be regulated within 7.2 to 7.4, a very, very narrow range. Okay. So you can see that zeta ions, again, okay, zeta ions. So it's a neutral molecule with positive and negative uh, electrical charge right, at different locations within that molecule. So amino acids, they are best known. Example, zeta ions is formed through a kind of intramolecular. Intra means within, okay, acid-based reaction. If you look at the HCl and NaOH, it's not intramolecular, okay? It's between two types of, compound, right? NaOH and HCl, right? So formation of zeta ions, uh, we have uh, drawn about this already. And the next part, we're going to look at is how the formations of the, sorry, okay, dipeptides, okay? How to form a dipeptide, okay? So with this, I stop the recording.